so let's just get the elephant out of the room first. That Emma facial reaction at the end of the chapter. Scary as fuck. Like, that... That was... Like, a 180 compared to the normal Emma. Like, her face usually is happy. She usually has frowns, sadness. It, it, we've seen some smirks and stuff. But overall, the face that Emma showed at the end of the chapter was straight up fucking terrifying. Like, that was a face of a murderer. Like, that was a face of someone that was about to gut you. And pretty much just, just destroy everything that you stand for. Like, that's exactly the face Emma had on her at the end of the chapter. Now, I'm kind of scared to find out exactly what Emma has been planning for her to show that face because this chapter, it's a very interesting chapter because about 90, about 99% of this chapter, honestly, or 95% of the chapter is focused on Emma and Ray giving up. They, they both have given up. That That's under the, the assumption we have now. Like, throughout this chapter, like, they both have given up, they're like, fuck it, we might as well just die and give up and all that, because, I mean, everything that's happened, they just lost all will, all hope to continue moving forward, and they're like, let's just fucking die, and under the assumption throughout the majority of the chapter, you're like, holy shit, like, they've given up, time passes and two months pass, like, there's a fucking time skip, I'm like, oh my god, what's gonna happen, and then we get the final page, and then Ray asks Emma, like, you haven't really given up, have you, and you just have this very stern look on his face, like, he's really serious, and then Emma just smiles and all that, like, an evil smile, I'm like, yo, yo, so, let's just assume what happened here, so, Emma and Ray I'm assuming weren't talking anymore, but they were both doing their own plan. They were trying to disguise that they were still working on a way to escape, but in their own way. And because of this, it made it to where Isabel thought that they'd just given up and that she would just drop her guard. And that honestly probably worked, actually, because you see in the middle of the chapter to where Isabel talks to Emma, and then she's like, fine then, just, you know, give it up and all that, and just, you know, make it easier on yourself, and she just walked off. And... It just shows you that she's pretty much just dropped her guard now because everything is just GG. So, I feel like that was the entire plan, to make Isabel drop her guard. However, to escape, it's still going to be something ridiculously hard to be able to do because the entirety of the pit, to the wall, to the just getting over into one section to be able to cross the bridge, it just, it's going to be a hard feat to do. So, it's not going to be easy. But on top of that, for Emma to save everyone like what she wants to do there's just no fucking way so let's talk about the situation with isabel what she said to emma before i get into the final part of the chapter so isabel comes up to emma and is like you know i could put in a good word for you i could put you in for the mama training program you can either become a mother or you know a sister depending on how it goes, and this is something that many of us already have already speculated about and talked about quite a bit already in the comments, on Twitter, social media, everywhere, it, it's been talked about already. It's something that many have assumed that is eventually going to happen to Emma. Emma is going to eventually join the mother program and become something like Isabel. We've all assumed that's probably what's going to happen. Maybe, you know, eventually Ray and Norman, they both end up dead, and then Isabel, you know, puts Emma in the mother training program. Like, that's something we assumed is probably going to happen. So that combo with Isabel and Emma was something we all expected. And I like how that was kind of introduced in this chapter. It felt like at the right point in time for Isabel to do that. It was kind of showing that Isabel was trying to manipulate Emma and just tear her apart, rip her apart, and then just show, like, your only option now is to become a mother, or unless you just want to die, just become fodder and just food for the demons, regardless of whatever you want. And I really ha like how she looked at Emma, and I, the way she talked to Emma, it was like she was doing... Uh, uh, like an actual self-reflection in that moment. She was looking at herself when she was talking to Emma because I feel like since we do know that Isabel did try to escape in the past, we know for a fact she did. She was on the wall and then the grandma popped up and stopped her from, you know, escaping. We know she tried to in the past. And so I feel like that entire convo between Isabel and Emma was kind of like Isabel 
showing pity towards Emma because she knows how it feels and she was in that exact same situation. And when she states, like, just make the best of what you have left. Make the best of your situation that's absolute shit. Make the best out of it. I mean, yes, it fucking sucks, but become a mother, you get to live on. I mean, hey, I mean, either you're gonna die a pointless fucking death or you can become a mother and continue living on. And she's like, make the best of what your options are available to you right now. And... I understand where she's coming from, and I feel like the whole reason why Isabel brought that up was just because she felt pity because she remembered how she was. Now, besides that, let's talk about the situation with the end of the chapter. So, with Emma making that face, and knowing that most likely Ray and Emma weren't really communicating about their plan, I'm under the assumption that whatever Emma has concocted and is going to be doing is going to be fucking devastating. Like, as I've already said before, I feel like before everything is said and done, most likely Isabel is going to die. Like, there, there's going to be a point that's going to drive Emma to want to kill Isabel. Because we, we know, we definitely know, as the reader, we have seen it already a couple of times. But not a lot, but we've seen it a couple of times. About twice now. And this is the third now with this face. We've seen it that Emma does have a side to her that makes her a little bit different from the normal, naive cliche shown in character because we do know even though she's very naive that's a big trait about her we, we know for a fact it was brought up once again in the last chapter by norman but also in this chapter just to show how she is she's very naive and she's someone that just acts like a typical shonen lead that's exactly who she is she's very very typical shonen-ish main character however there has been sides of her that get rid of that mold, completely remove the mold of her being a typical shonen character, especially when it comes to, like, stop doing it, don't do this again, don't sacrifice children ever again, when she was talking to Ray, She had this very serious expression, like she was straight up gonna gut this man. And I feel like because of how unpredictable Emma is, especially with that type of personality, that she might go to such lengths to maybe kill Isabel. Or, you know, hurt her in a way to where she can't do anything and then they can get out of there. I feel like something like that's going to happen because of that type of personality. And that facial expression, which looks like a face that straight up says, I want to kill a bitch. That's exactly what it looks like. So, either what's going to happen at the end of this chapter is that Emma is going to join the mother program. Like, she's just giving up. Or, two, she has a plan that which results most likely in something very bad, probably killing Isabel, one or the other. Honestly, I really have no idea how these two are going to actually escape from the farm, because of everything that we already know and all that, it's going to be very hard, and I really have no idea what they're going to do. So, I'm really excited to see where the writer wants to take these upcoming chapters. I'm just surprised to get the time skip, because I thought it was going to get dragged out, but it didn't. Very good pacing with that. Uh, very, very good pacing. Solid pacing with what happened in this chapter, especially with the time skip. So yeah, overall, the chapter. Good chapter. Very good chapter, especially with the details that we got in this chapter, but also finding out a little bit more about how children are brought to the orphanage. So actually, let's take a moment to talk about that, okay? So it is officially confirmed now who gives birth but also how it's done in the first place. So, from what I saw here, it seems like the mothers and the sisters are the ones given the sperm. And they're the ones that have children. It's not just regular women brought in, but it's actually mothers and sisters, you know, whatever position they have to have a child. They're, they're able to have a child. And they're given sperm from an IVF. And because of this... You can assume that there is sperm donors. We don't know exactly who is donating the sperm or whatever, but we can assume that there's most likely some bioengineering going on throughout this series because of what is happening. Like, let's just take a moment to factor all this in, okay? This series right now has the children being raised on a farm to be fed to the demons. And let's just think about... Let's, let's think about how real life is, okay? Since this series does have a lot of correlation to how real life is, let's just factor in what we do to animals. So, it is already proven that we do do some despicable things to cattle and stuff like that to be able to make them tastier for human consumption. It's already proven that we inject them with chemicals and different stuff like that to allow them to grow faster. So, with that being said, what's to say that's not what the demons slash mothers and sisters are doing to the children? Now, what I'm getting at is, I don't think they're necessarily 
making it to where their bodies grow faster, but I feel like they're making it to where their probably meat tastes better or their brains develop faster because let's think about it, okay? They are on a farm that's kind of meant to be organic. And what this means is, is their brain thinks that they're not trapped. They're not enclosed in a way to where they're, you know, like farm animals. That's what makes this organic. Now, I do feel like since we do know now that the mothers are the ones that are impregnated by through sper sperm donations, we can assume that the sperm and then also the mother, since they're already crazy, crazy already to be able to get to their position because of the harsh training they get, and for all the survival they have had to do throughout, you know, the other mothers and sisters, we know they're already awesome as, you know, the women's side. They have great genes. And so because of that, obviously, we don't really know where the sperm comes from, but we do know their sperm donations. And what's to say that the demons and stuff aren't manipulating the sperm to be able to make good genes, to make good children, to allow them to be very tasty. So I feel like there is bioengineering in this series, for instance, being able to manipulate the genes of children to allow them to be smarter than what they are which would explain why the children are so advanced for their age, why they seem to be hell of above, like, adults, most adults in real life, just because of most likely what the demons are doing to their bodies. Since we do know they're scientists in this series, we do know this is a farm, it would make sense that there would be manipulation to the children's minds and how they grow because of what the whole purpose of the farm is in the first place. So that's just my theory right then and there. So yeah, overall, interesting. I, I just wonder who donates the sperm. I'm really curious about that. I mean, we know that there's guys a part of, you know, what's going on with these demons and stuff because we saw a male scientist, but we don't really know who's donating it. I I'm just wondering if, like, some of the children are selected from the farm to become sperm donators. I'm curious. Maybe that's what's going on with Norman. Who knows? So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.